I'm Tanya Fox, and you're listening to Fox Talks Business Podcast. I started my career in the corporate world, but always played to my own tune and love to think outside of the box. This didn't always serve me well with the bosses, so I made the decision to become an entrepreneur. And that little seed of entrepreneurial curiosity continued to grow as I branched out into retail, service, and franchise businesses. Now, I have been fortunate to have amazing successes in the last two decades, but they did not come without some really big failures and even bigger lessons learned. And that's why I started this podcast, not just to share the failures, but to show you how you can turn every failure into a success. We're going to hear from some amazing humans from around the world that are going to share their stories of the good, the bad, and the motivational entrepreneurial life has to offer. After all, life is too short to make all of the mistakes yourself. So why not learn from each other? And of course, we're going to have some fun because as I always say, well, you know what? I'll tell you that at the end of the episode. So thank you so much for joining me today, Mike. I'm really excited to talk with you. Yeah, me too. This is going to be great. So before we get started into all of the stuff that I really want to know, tell us a little bit about your background, because you have quite an interesting story of how you got where you are. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, I mean, I came from, I came from a, you know, uh, I was never a great student, but I was like, well, at least if I go to college, I'll like get through some program and, and at least have the piece of paper. I still really believed at that time. I didn't have a lot of entrepreneurial influence when I was younger, although I, I had like, you know, a lot of little ways I made my own money. But so I went to school. It did not go well. Uh, I was on academic probation super fast. I wasn't really in the right headspace, but I don't learn by having people talk at me. And I, you know, so I left, left school after one year, uh, worked in a sales job, and then eventually I was like, you know what? I need, I need an adult job. This is what I just quantified it in my head as an adult job. So I started working for an insurance company, a uh, big company, kind of moved up very quickly within that. I was doing, you know, uh, risk assessment for commercial properties. Basically, if you died or were hurt, I would decide, you know, what our exposure was on it. It was a horribly depressing job. <laughs> uh, just awful. But uh, but it was, you know, every year I kept being very aggressive with how much more money I could make. And then, you know, home office and company car. And I was like, wait, you know, it's getting cozy and everything's okay. But at the heart of it, I, I knew I was in the wrong spot. Um, but I was afraid. I was, I was a desperate, I was desperately afraid because I was like, well, I don't have any education. Like, where am I going to go? Who's going to take me? I could go back into sales because I know I'm good at that, but I didn't see it as like a future. Anyway, I had a, uh, one morning I was sitting out front of the office and I had a, I'll call it an epiphany slash panic attack. That's, <laughs> that's a good way like to that. describe it. <laughs> yeah. And I, I just, uh, I knew that that was the last day I was going to work at that company. And despite talking to my parents and some friends online ahead of time to kind of talk me off the ledge, if you will, uh, I knew it wasn't going to happen. And so walked in, quit. And a couple of weeks later, I was on, you know, on the, the deck in the back of my, my house and decided we were going to start a software company. Don't know where it came from. It was just, you know, we just thought, why don't we make, you know, a robot that does something? And then we're like, what's something that people buy all the time? And we tried to make a grocery shopping robot app before it's time and we didn't have the executional skill set to do it we just were two morons that thought we could make a software product with no experience how hard could it be <laughs> how hard could it be very very and very expensive um from a development and, and that kind of standpoint so i kind of lucked into marketing in a way because as that company was burning money like crazy we had had some people that bought into the idea of this advertising platform for their products we kind of came to them and said hey look this isn't going to be done anytime soon but you've already kind of given us some money let us market your business you've probably written this off as experimental budget so like will you let us spend it and they're like sure no problem so i go into like hyper focus mode i watched youtube for like 40 consecutive hours and i was like okay I know how to run Google ads now, I think. <laughs> um, and because I had gotten the green light on experimental, I just started spending their money and driving traffic to their website and, you know, adapting. And, and I was very invested because I was like, well, if this goes well, at least it could keep us floating until we're done. And then about eight months after that, like, so it was going really well. 
in about eight months, we decided to shut the software down. It just wasn't right. And so I took over the marketing clients from uh, my previous partners. And that was 2014. And so since then, I've just, I've developed it into uh, what it is today, which is a, you know, a remote uh, digital marketing agency, um, small staff, small team, but we work with, you know, 10 to 12 clients at a time. Um, and we've got, you know, I've, I'm very free from that business now. I have an operator and, and kind of all the pieces in motion. So I don't spend a lot of time in that business anymore, but it's great. It's the thing that pays the bills. It's the thing that uh, people keep coming to it. So, yeah. So, and I think that's, that's great. And I think a lot of people can relate to that. So let's talk a little bit about, you know, what it is that you teach people, because I had said, you know, just off air that I was looking yeah. at you know, a course that you had and, and all of your messaging was really hitting home with me. So um, I want to share that with, with yeah. the audience. So let's talk a little bit about what you offer people in regards to outreach and personalization. Yeah, absolutely. So, so aside from the, you know, we run pay-per-click ads for businesses, I uh, kind of fell into business coaching, marketing coaching in, in, and so the people that I work with are, you know, solopreneurs, usually offering business to business services, just because that's the wheelhouse, that's the ecosystem I'm comfortable with. And I know how to, you know, build those relationships and get that attention. So for me, the way I built everything up was I tried to create partnerships that were mutually beneficial. So, you know, a web, de web design company who, you know, didn't offer digital marketing, but their clients would probably like it if they did. Right. And so what, that's how I kind of built up the agency. And what I did is I, I created these customized videos and I sent them to people. I direct messaged them to them on LinkedIn or Instagram or wherever it seemed like they were the most active, uh, just inviting them to a conversation. Uh, the, you know, they were between a minute and a minute and 40 seconds long. So it was really me kind of going on and on and on. I've, I've shortened them since, um, but just, yeah, just, taking the time to reach out to every single person and say, you know, seems like this might be something that you want. If not, no problem. But if it is, I'd love to have a conversation with you and inviting them to a conversation. The amount of responses that I get from video that are just like, I can't believe you sent me a video. I've never seen this before is insanely high. Um, and that alone has put me in the room in sales calls off of the first point of contact no credibility, have no idea who I am, but are willing to talk about doing a deal today because I came forward and brought that to the table. And so it's been incredible. Um, I, I teach people now how to do that. Um, we'll, we'll share a resource. I have a free online course. It's literally like, I think it's about 26 minutes and it's, you know, end to end everything you need to know about how to find the right people, how to, you know, position the messaging, how, um, even how to get referrals if, they reject you um, because that's, you know, you wouldn't think that that's the case. And if you've ever emailed somebody offering a product or service and they said, no, you don't think, Hey, you know, do you want to refer me to someone else? Like that's not really a natural path, but honestly with this custom, like with the video, they feel uh, committed and like locked into you. And I've been able to get referral business from people who are like, Hey, you know what? This isn't the right fit for me because it was such a, a soft rejection. They were so, you know, warmed up to me because they, they got video messages. So it's been a really fun path teaching people how to, you know, generate leads or, you know, get onto podcasts or get media or anything you're trying to do just by building a real relationship with the person, you know? Well, and I think, you know, people can, even if they just think back to their own inbox, um, you're, we're so used to getting those stock messages, like the hi company so-and-so, or, you know, like I often get whatever my like Facebook name is, or like an, mm -hmm. and you know, it's just an insert, <laughs> like, yeah. insert tag here, you know, yeah. and it's, so it's like a very stock generated one. And of course they say, you know, I've researched you and, you know, by the time you, if you do read the message, get to the end of it, you're like, no, you haven't, you have mm -hmm. no idea who I am. <laughs> so yeah. let's talk a little bit about, <clears throat> you know, when you say send a video, let's talk a little bit more about like what you're doing with that. Cause I think some people are kind of might be intimidated by that of going, yeah. you mean to like every individual person <laughs> or so what is the difference? You know, let's talk a little bit more about that for yeah. people, the difference between them. Great question. Uh, the question of to everybody 
the answer is yes. Um, I, you know, I've done all of this because we do, you know, lead generation for companies as part of the agency side. So we've sent hundreds of thousands of cold emails and, you know, drip campaigns via text on, on LinkedIn and, and cold calling and, and walking into people's businesses. I've sold in every different way. This is the most, this is the biggest unlock I've ever seen uh, ever before. And so taking the time to do it makes sense, but there is an intimidation factor. There's a like, wait, what do you know? What do I say? Do I have to put my, I'm going on the camera. Are you sure? Um, I get a lot of, you know, you get a lot of that feedback. So a couple things. Um, I always, you know, say hi and, and thank the person for connecting. So if you know, you've followed them, they follow you, you send, so, Hey, you know, thanks for connecting. I just wanted to reach out and introduce myself. I explain what I do or what I'm reaching out for in the context of how it might benefit their business. So I don't say like, Hey, we off, you know, I offer business coaching or I offer digital marketing for your, for your company um, because they don't care, right? That's not in their purview unless they just happen to be looking at that very moment. Um, so what I do is I frame it to the benefit of something that they would find value from. Now that's going to differ from person to person. If you're reaching out to a founder versus a VP versus a manager, they're going to have different things. So what I typically recommend is for you to understand what makes that person tick. So, you know, what, what things are important to them? How are they getting, um, you know, judged or rated within the company? You know, like what are their, what is that role's objectives? What is, what is a good job for them? What is a bad job for them? Because then you can start to understand, okay, if it's to do with, you know, client retention versus, you know, um, versus, you know, bringing on new business versus upselling existing customers, if you know what that person's responsible for, you can frame your service to explain how it's going to work in that favor for them. So taking the time to understand, you know, what motivates the person you're speaking to and explaining your service that way is a good start. And then once you've kind of, so I kind of go two to three sentences about what it is that I do. Then I invite them. I invite their opinion on if they think this is a good fit. I think people make the mistake often. They say, Hey, you need this. Your customers need this. This is going to save you money or, but, but I'm not, I'm not that invested in you yet. I don't care. You're just some random person reaching out to me and people don't like being told what to do. You know, Very I true. think, you know, think about my five-year-old niece. I think about my mom, you tell them what to do. It's like, there's this automatic rebellion of like, don't tell me what to do. Right? <laughs> yeah. So I, I invite, I say, Hey, you know, from looking at your company, I don't pretend I've done a bunch of research. I just know that what industry company size and the role I'm reaching out to, that's the only data I have. I say, Hey, you know, the service that we offer tends to be a really good fit for companies like yours. Um, if this sounds interesting, I would love to have a conversation about it. And then that way you're giving them the autonomy to say no or judge. And you're also inviting them to give you feedback. Is this a good fit for them? Is it not? And usually at that point, it, it will get them to at least respond back saying, Hey, this might be, or I'm not quite sure, or no, absolutely not. You can get that feedback loop from them, which is nice. And then I, I kind of give them a call to action at the end, right? I, you know, I'd love to invite you to chat. Um, just, you know, respond back to this. You know, if you, it'd be great if you did a video. If not, just send me a message and let me know if it's the right fit. And if it is, we'll schedule a time to chat. Like, and then that's it. And then kind of sign off. And you can accomplish all that within about a minute. Um, but that minute can feel, you know, it, it can feel daunting to do. So that's the content. And then the delivery is this people, when they receive your message are thinking to themselves about how they would be doing this and how intimidating it would be for them. So coming across perfectly polished, I don't think makes any sense. If I stumble on my words in the first seven to 10 seconds, I may restart my recording, but after the first 10 seconds, I just keep going. And if I trip, I'm like, Oh, that's not what I meant to say. What I meant to say was, and I think the vulnerability of that and like, they would be thinking, 
oh, that's probably what I would sound like if I was doing a message. And it humanizes your outreach and it humanizes your approach. So don't beat yourself up about the video having to be perfect and robotic and missing words. Like I actually find the videos that are a little bit screwed up are better. And then do them a, do them a bunch at a time. So after you've done the first five in a row, your next 15 to 20 are going to be really easy because you're going to be going off of this like point A to point B to point C and you're going to get in the habit and you're going to get used to just doing it over and over and over again. So never do less than, you know, 20 at a time because the first five to seven, you're ramping up and trying to figure it out. And then you actually hit a groove and a sweet spot of remembering what the words are and in what order and, you know, you're, the way you're supposed to be presenting it. Um, so do as many as you can at the same time. Well, and I think the, that I love what you said about, you know, not worrying about stumbling over your words, because I think not only does that help people to be able to relate, but I think it also makes them realize that this isn't a stock, something that you've mm -hmm. just inserted their name into, right? Like it, yeah. it makes it feel like the message is directly for them. And you're, you know, you were in the moment going, ah, oh, I got to send a video to this person and talk to them. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, you know, I've found, like I said, I've been measuring quite a bit of this. So I do between 50 and 70 video messages a week, typically. The last couple of weeks have been a bit off, but I, I do, and I'm doing it to, you know, build relationships on all different fronts, not just sales. Um, and I've actually gotten to the point now where, you know, if it's somebody's birthday, I literally send them a video message from my phone. I barely type anymore. <laughs> it's video and it's a lot of video and audio now. Um, just cause it's like, you can connect with it. You can't, you know, I think with text, one of the problems I have with it is you can misinterpret it super easily. Like think about, you know, arguments and, and, you know, business qualms that have come up cause they just, somebody read something the wrong way or was worded in a way that the person's, Oh, how could they say that? You're like, oh, that's not what I meant at all. So I like it because you, you, it's very hard to take out of context too. Well, and I think you can convey your emotion with it too, where you can't like, you know, but if you're really excited about the potential of connecting with them, you can put mm -hmm. that in a video. Whereas, I mean, you can put some exclamation marks, I guess, but um, it's really hard to get that across um, because I struggle with that too, trying to get that across. And that's why I was like, I don't know why I don't do this. This is a great idea. Like, um, and I think an easy way and something that's different um, that not everybody is going to expect to see that and be like, Oh, a video. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. I actually keep a, I actually keep a folder of, on my phone of screenshots of everyone who's responded being like, this is insane that you sent me a video. This is like, I'm, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to try this or like, you know, thank you. Thank you so much for like putting forth an effort like that. And I think, you know, now more than ever where, you know, we're not in offices, we're not meeting people as much face to face. One of the talks I do on this, I looked up a stat on Forbes and it was uh, 12,000 business to business trade shows were canceled in the US alone last year in 2020, right. which, which was about 90, which I think they calculated around $92 billion worth of commerce. So where, where did all those conversations go? Like they came online, right? And, and we saw the stats of like email marketing going up and all this stuff. So now not only are we being more inundated than we were before, um, you know, we've got, you know, we've got email fatigue, we've got remote work fatigue, we've got Zoom fatigue. And so this is just that like, you know, really takes them out of their shell. Just did somebody say, and it's, whether it's a video or a voice memo, it doesn't really matter. The personalization makes a big difference. And I like that you brought that up too, that it doesn't, you know, even just a, a voice memo can, can work as well, because I remember getting those, like, I remember somebody sending me one and just saying, Hey, I just wanted to send you a quick message to say, thank you. And I will always remember that person. I will always remember that, you know, that guest. Cause I just thought, Oh, like how sweet of them to take the time, even though it probably was the same amount of time that they would have written the text, but mm -hmm. it, it really did. Like it just meant a little bit more. So I think yeah. that's, that's a different way of thinking of it. Yeah. And I mean, one of the like hidden benefits of this is, I mean, it's not, I wouldn't consider it an open rate cause it's not an email, but when, when you get, a block of text that pops up in your inbox or DM or wherever it's coming up. It's very easy to skim. It's very easy to just straight up ignore it. 
when you see an audio message, it just literally comes in a rectangle with little audio bubbles. And you're just like, what is that? I have to touch it. I have to do it. <laughs> or it's like someone's face with a play button shows up and you're like, I don't have a choice. I have to see what this is, you know? So the open rate is super, super high of people who will engage with them because there's just the curiosity of like, what is this, <laughs> you know? So if people are sitting out there and they're like, I would love to do this, but like, how, like, what do I need for that? Um, because I'm sure that there's some people are like, do I need something special to be able to do this? Like how on earth would I send this out on like LinkedIn or Instagram mm -hmm. or whatever? Let's yep. go maybe a little, and I know it, there's a lot of different things, but let's maybe just go into a little bit to help people actually like maybe send one today. <laughs> sure. Yeah. So Boom. That's all you need. Um, I, so I like to have a tripod just so it kind of like sits in line and I can just like tap the record button instead of trying to hold it outside of that. You do not need anything. There's no external softwares. In fact, other softwares will actually be a detriment because right inside of LinkedIn. So in your messaging thing, if you hit the plus sign, there's a little video camera on Instagram or Facebook, exact same thing. Instagram, you just hold it down. Facebook, you just hold it down and you're recording right there. And you can, uh, you can review it before it sends. It doesn't automatically go out the door. Um, so you can you know double check that you're happy with it, but doing it natively inside the platform um, is going to make the response rate a lot higher. You can record it on like Loom or you know Cloud app or different services where there's like a screen recording element. The problem is when you send somebody a link, instead of it just being the video popping up, um, there's often a hesitation of like, what is this? Is somebody finching my, you know, are they trying to get into my bank account? What's going on? Right. There's an inherent distrust, which whereas just a play button showing up, it, it feels a lot more um, natural and doesn't seem it, it doesn't seem risky at all. So yeah, I mean, I do it right inside the platform, right from my phone, um, which makes it a lot easier. There's not really a barrier to entry. And I think, you know, if you're, you know, if you want to do one today and you're, you know, I'm not ready to reach out to my dream customers and invite them to a sales call, get a hold of an existing customer or get a hold of a prospect who, you know, you're in the middle of a sales cycle with, um, and just, and just, just send them 20 or 30 seconds, you know, uh, Hey John, uh, it's Mike. I was just thinking about our conversation the other day. I know you said you needed a, a little bit of time to think about it. No problem. I just wanted to let you know that, you know, if you're, you know, if you want to do it, like we'd be really excited to get started, you know, talk to you soon. So it doesn't have to be a, a you know, a cold intrusive outreach at the beginning. You can just practice with existing clients, people, you know, um, try it that way. So you can feel the groove. You can get past the intimidation factor because obviously if you're going and pitching a, a meeting, you know, I'm reaching out to a company to offer them a service. There's a lot more that goes with that. A lot more nerves, a lot more thoughtfulness of what am I going to say? Is this going to come across weird? And the truth is sometimes it will, sometimes you'll send them and then you'll be like, why did I send that? <laughs> um, but that's, to me, it's part of the game. I, I think you're never going to, you're never going to, you know, get a hit every at bat. That's just the nature of sales, you know? 10% is like the average closing ratio for sales, you know, 25, if you're excellent, um, you know, maybe 40, if every lead is a warm lead walking in the door, but, but there's also then on the other side of that, there's a 60 or an 80 or a 90% of the time when, you know, it's not the right time. People didn't connect with you the right way. They didn't need it. They didn't care. They already had a vendor and they didn't want to let it go. So, I mean, there's a million reasons to say no. So you have to be ready to get, more no's than yeses, obviously, when you start doing it. But I think a good way to start is to, you know, someone that you're already somewhat engaged with, uh, send them a message and just say, hey, I was thinking about our, our chat, um, you know, no rush, no pressure, just wanted to pop up top of mind, have a great day. That's it. You know, make it really simple. Well, and I think this is something, you know, that is beneficial even to do, like you had said, to even your current clients mm -hmm. of, you know, and obviously it'll vary depending what industry you're in. But I think we get so used to sending emails or sending text messages and that even just a simple like, hey, I'm just checking in and saying that I appreciate you and thank you so much for being a client and, you know, I hope having a great day can go a long way. Um, and it's something so simple, I think, that you and your staff can do to reach out that just adds that 
little bit extra. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, absolutely. And again, especially if you're in, you know, offering business to business type services, you're always at the mercy of, you know, the next shiny object that pops into their purview. Oh, we should do this now. Let's talk to this person. You know, it, you know, and I guess that's with anything, whether it's a, a business to consumer, you know, uh, salon or, a any type of business like that, you're always at risk of, you know, shiny object, them feeling like it's like, it's like with the phone companies who there's a phone company I saw an ad the other day. And I was like, this is how did it take this long for them to come up with this? And the whole (laughs) gist of the commercial was just like, was like, Hey, there's this amazing new customer special, but every one of our existing customers can have it if they want to. And it's like, where was that? Cause like, you know how many, you know how many times I've left a cell phone or an internet or a whatever provider? Cause I was like, why are you giving these guys this amazing price to come in? Like we've been, I've been paying you. If you can afford to do it for that price then give it to me too. You know? I should have that price. Yeah. Should, yeah. And so I think, you know, I think giving that extra layer of customer service, especially now where, you know, you know, budgets are slashed and the pressure is higher and, and this and this and that. I think, you know, building genuine relationships with the customers that you have um, instead of shying away and saying, I hope, I just hope they keep paying me. I hope they keep paying me. Right. Um, I think it's a really, really good investment in your time. Well, and I think like you said, you know, a lot of people might be thinking, well, gosh, like this isn't something that I can automate because we hear about that a lot. Right. People mm-hmm. are like, you know, do everything you can. And I hear that so much from like, coaches and they're like automate everything but i think people are sick of automation and they're you know this is you know doesn't take you a lot of time like you said a minute mm-hmm. to send it out right. um and doesn't give you that box feeling <laughs> that you're right. just an insert name insert info here yeah. um yeah i mean mind you it does bring me a lot of joy when i get an email and one of the inserts didn't work Mm-hmm. You know, and it just says insert hey, whatever hey, it was. Hey, first name. Yeah. Right. And you're like, wow, thanks. That's uh <laughs> I actually I actually respond to them and screenshot them and then post them in my stories. I do it often. <laughs> so there, everyone's gonna have to go and check out those. I usually just laugh inwardly, but yeah, maybe I should start calling people out on it. <laughs> it's kind of fun. It's kind of fun. So um, besides all of the information that you gave, and then of course, we'll, we'll, I want to talk a little bit more about the free course that you offer. What is one tip that you could give to people today um, you know, that you would think this would be something that you could take and implement today? Yeah. So I think, I think with, with this type of non-scaled, non-automated process that requires you and your voice and your nerve and your all this stuff is just is just start when you see the response even if it's people you know even it's even if it's existing customers the reaction that they give you based on sending messages like this will motivate you tremendously towards doing it to people that you don't know and then it will become the i i will never communicate another way ever again like it, the, the impact of it is just incredible. So, um, I I would say, you know, do it with the low hanging fruit, do it in the easy way. Um, because the response and the results from it will, will be uh, really exciting to, to go play with in a different ecosystem. Well, and I love what you said too, that the imperfection of your message is the perfection of it. Yeah. Um, Because I think people get stuck in that, right? Like I have to be completely polished and do it over and over again. And I remember um, it reminds me of like always trying to on YouTube, you know, like it freeze frames you and it would always do like the worst photo of me. Like it looked like I was in the middle of a sneeze. And then finally I was just like, oh, forget it. And then I found that that's what people loved. They were like, we just love to see what kind of weird facial feature you're going to be frozen in on that video. Yeah. And I realized that the imperfection was actually what people wanted. So I was like, oh, here I was trying to get like the perfect look and I yeah. should have just left it. <laughs> yeah. And I think one thing as like people are thinking about, okay, that's great for, you know, the first five people that pop into my mind, but then what? So there's a, there's, a, so I use a tool and I can, I can give you the link. It's a free, I, I didn't, make it. I just adapted it for myself, but there's a free template on Airtable that I use. 
And essentially, Air, so Airtable is like a database software. It's kind of like an Excel meets a project management kind of tool, but okay. it's, it's, it's very clean, it's very simple. And so mine basically says, you know, name of the person, you know, the industry, where they're from, any notes that I have about them, links to their social media, their phone, their email. And then it has a thing that said, when did you last contact them? How often do you want to stay in touch? So it's like weekly, bi-weekly, monthly, quarterly, biannually, annually. And then, so if it's like, great, I want to talk to this person quarterly. And the last time I talked to them was two months ago, it'll have a timer of like minus 30 days. And then when that timer hits zero, my email gets a shot saying, Hey, go send a message to this person. This is what, you know, all my notes, anything that I've talked to them about in the past. And I can literally click from that email pops up in their LinkedIn and I can just quickly record a message. So you can automate cool everything but the send which is nice because like keeping track of all the stuff i have a list i'd say it's close to 400 of people that i keep in touch with in this way and i would never be able to do it without us like something like this so it's a well, really templates make me happy so this one i'm like super excited for <laughs> it's fun and i use it for i use it for personal too like it's it's you know it's my personal slash business slash prospect slash People I'm reaching out to for podcast, like everything is in one bucket and it keeps track of all my conversations. And yeah, it's under the free plan on Airtable. So it's amazing. So I'll share that with you. Yeah, I would love that. Okay, so I got really, really excited. I got to tell you, but <clears throat> templates are like, th those stuff makes me happy. Spreadsheets make me happy. So that's my bookkeeping background. So let's talk a little bit about the lead generation mini course that you have. What can people yeah. expect? Um, in that we, I know we talked briefly, but let's go into a yeah. little bit more explanation. Sure. Absolutely. So for me, um, I, I consider myself a very practical teacher. I despise online courses that are 60 hours of content for the sake of having a big number of hours. Like, I just think if you can get to the point in 20 minutes, why are you talking for two hours? Why? So this is really, really short, really concise. We had, um, you know, obviously during COVID, we, we got hit pretty bad. Um, we had a training product that was, you know, doing around $40,000 a month. It went to zero and I knew it was going to happen. I told my team, I'm like, we're no longer going to make money from this. As soon as this lockdown starts, they're like, what do you mean? Of course it will. <laughs> like, it, it's dead. I promise. And it, you know, it, it died. And so what I did is I put together a list of all the people that I thought would be valuable to connect with from a business or from a, you know, giving away some free consulting time or, or whatever my strategy was, it doesn't really matter, but this is the exact process that I use to basically re kickstart that product and, and, and launch the business back up in it back up to where it was. And so it is step-by-step step from how to find the people, uh, how to create a database of them, uh, if you've got, you know, a buyer persona or a person that you typically do business with. So this is really like lead outreach, if you will. So it's you know, how to make a list of them, a couple tools that you can use to automate and pull all the data together, um, how to connect with them, because you have to be, you know, connected together on LinkedIn before you can send a video. And then um, basically a script with some examples of exactly how you should structure your conversation and why. So things like, you know, not pushing for a time, you know, asking for a time um, and, and just those components that made it really, really successful. Because when I first started it, it was kind of like, I didn't know what to say. I didn't know how I should come across. And so I, you know, I did what I would typically do in like a cold email and it comes across. Like when I went back and listened to some of those recordings, I'm like, this sounds like a cold email. And if you're going to send a video, it can't, it's not, it's not the same thing. It's not the same dynamic. It's really building a relationship instead of shooting something out to 500 people and hoping that you caught someone at the right time. So really how to like personalize it, how to not, you know, make them feel bothered, how to get them to engage. So kind of the, the process and the, the script that I would use in order to, uh, to do that outreach. Well, I'd love that. And I had signed on and was listening just, <laughs> just before, cause you had mentioned, yeah, I got your notification. So I will be taking this because <laughs> I think it's a very interesting concept, but I also think it's something that 
you know, is easy enough to do. And in this day and age, I mean, there's so many people that are looking for a way to stand out and looking for a way to connect. And I think this is an easy way to do it when you're constantly inundated with, like you said, everyone's like, oh, you have to do Facebook ads or you have to do LinkedIn ads, or this is the only way you're going to reach people because everybody's at home. I think this it's not. And here is another answer that's not going to break your bank, especially at the time that people are going through right now where disposable income isn't so disposable. (laughs) And the truth is like most people don't have the talent to run Facebook and LinkedIn ads. Like there's a bunch of online courses that make it seem like, oh, you know, I get these YouTube videos all the time, like, you know, zero to eight figures in 18 months. Like, (laughs) what are you talking about? That's not, no, that's selling a course on how to sell courses. I mean, there's so much junk. There's so much of that stuff out there. It's, and it's sad. It makes, it made me stepping into that type of role feel very insecure. I was like, I don't want to come across as a coach like that. I just, you know, so I was like, how do I be the anti that? And so I think, you know, most businesses don't need as much customers required to to use Facebook ads. And the truth is, you know, I've, and I've spent over 4 million on Facebook between my customers and myself. So I, I mean, we know the ins and outs and we run it for our, you know, our agency side runs ads for people, but these are people that live and breathe ad platforms. Like these things are not easy, you know, there's constantly things changing, uh, the rules and the back end and the way that targeting works is changing. You have to know how to, you know, read and understand and adapt the data like nothing or else, you know, you can spend a thousand bucks really fast. That's never going to come back to you. Like I've seen it many times. And so this was a path to, you know, people coming to me saying, I have to run ads and, and, you know, watching all these videos and thinking that's the only way. And then being like, well, wait, if you just had like three customers a month, wouldn't that be everything that you need for now? Yeah. Great. Let's just call them and tell them you want to do business with them. And so this has been a really big unlock for people who are, are nervous that, you know, the advertising path is the only path. And the truth is it's, it, it's not, it's not at all. And so this is a really great way to get around it. Well, and I love that tip too. I think people need to sit back and, you know, really assess like how much extra work do I really want and how much extra work can I actually handle or can we actually handle? Because I yeah. think sometimes people just go, well, as many, all the people, I just want yeah. all of the people. And then you go, that's great. But do you have time for all of the people? Right. <laughs> Yeah. And I think that's, that's part of it. And I think where a lot of people get stuck and I was early in my business, I was this guy. I was like, they'll say yes. Great. Sign them up. Let's go. And I was taking on work that didn't even make sense. I was having to bring in other people to help facilitate. Um, You know, and it wasn't until about four and a half years ago. And this is something that I, I teach a lot is if you think you need 10 clients, why don't you just get two clients and raise your price by five times? And to a lot of people, it's like, well, I can't do that. People will say no, but have you tested it? Is, you know, have you positioned in a way that it would make sense for them to pay you five times? So often I find it's, you know, getting paid appropriately and what you're worth is, is better than the volume game anyway. And then, and then if that rings true, and if that plays out the right way, then it maybe is two or three new clients a month. And then this is a great system. Great system to do it. That's awesome. So <clears throat> there was so much packed into this. Thank you so much for, <laughs> for spending time. I'm really excited. I'm super excited about the air table. So I'm going to make sure that I get that link for myself and I'll share it with everybody, of course. Um, but where's the best way if people are like, okay, that's it. I love this guy. I want to know more about him. Where's the best way for them to connect with you? Yeah, absolutely. So I think uh, if it's on the social side, I'm most active on Instagram at Mike AJ Mall. Um, it's kind of like, all my, you know, my life floating around the world currently in Mexico and then business too. So that's, that's probably my most active social platform. If you have any specific questions or you want to chat, you can get a hold of me at uh, my email, mike at marketme.co, M-A-R-K-E-T-M-E dot C-O dot co. And then we're going to link the, the lead generation course up in the show notes as well. Yes. And we'll make sure we have all of the links to everything so people can just do a quick connect. But um, it has been just an absolute pleasure to meet with you and to learn from you. I thank you so much. Yeah, it was very fun. Thanks for having me. 
So shortly after Mike and I recorded this episode, I headed over to finish watching all of the videos in his lead generation course. And I'm really excited to implement some of these. So it really is a valuable course to take. And like he said, he you know, isn't f filling it with just a bunch of stuff to make you sit online. So they're really short videos, really easy to take. And you know what? He gets right to the point, which is really enjoyable. So head over to our website at foxtalksbusiness.ca. Click on blogs on the left-hand side of the page. You will see this episode with all of the links on how you can connect with Mike, as well as to get his free mini course to help you start generating leads for your business without having to use ads. I'm also going to have the link to Airtable, which we briefly talked about in this episode. I have to thank Mike for putting me onto this. If you are like me and absolutely love spreadsheets, you are going to love this app. So I will have the link where you can find that. And if you have any other apps that you just absolutely love, please keep them coming. I love learning about new stuff and new programs. So keep those coming in. Next week, I'm really excited because I get to sit down with Christina Wise, who is a real estate mogul, a millionaire coach, a best-selling author, and the creator of several multi-million dollar businesses herself. Christina now teaches high-income entrepreneurs like yourself how to convert business income into personal net worth and passive incomes. She's also the host of her own podcast, so you're going to want to make sure that you tune into that. As always, we love it if you subscribe and download our episodes. If you can take a few minutes to leave us a review or a star rating, that helps us to keep these great episodes and these amazing guests and their information coming your way. If you want to put a face to the name, don't forget you can always head to our YouTube channel and be able to watch the interviews. It's a lot of fun there as well. So no matter what you're doing, whether you're going on video for the first time or the hundredth time, make sure you have fun. Because as I always say, if you're not having fun, why are you doing it?